All right, down here, checking out. These are used to be an old coal mine houses. Used to be over 3,000 people, and what's left of the houses is right here. They got it fenced off so nobody could uh, damage their homes. And uh, this is what's left of the coal mine's house. Uh, just think of this, about 3,000 people with multiple houses like this. It's pretty cool. I wish we could go somewhat inside, but it won't let you. Because they're doing it, trying to protect what's left of the of these homes of coal mine. We'll go, we'll go by the check out the coal mine, but you cannot go in the coal mine neither. But at least we can see what we can see. It's pretty cool. Just think, there's going to be a lot of houses like these were existed back in the days. Pretty neat. Metal roofs, tin tin roofs, cheap old tin roofs back in the days. What they used. Pretty cool. Just like I said, uh, they only have three existing homes that are still exist they got rocks build up foundation now we're going to go drive further down where the coal mine is but it's pretty neat rush arkansas rush arkansas i think it's a zinc mine Zinc mine because uh, it shows uh, the big old zinc. They I, I didn't read the whole thing, it's up there at the place where you're going to rent the kayaks. Have pictures of the some of the stuff that doesn't exist no more. Pretty cool. Let's go on to the next round. All right, here's a deal for the town. Here's a general store. <clears throat> it's pretty cool. This is an old general store. Now, let's read a little bit of the history of this. Up, get up here, we get up here, we'll see the sign here. Pretty cool, huh? Let's go check out the sign here. The ghost town, this town is called Rush. The ghost town of Rush stands as mute testimony of the activities of bygone area. Zinc carbonite ore was discovered in the valley of the late 1880s and the rush was on. Soon the hillsides were dotted with mines sprouting colorful names such as Morning Stars, White Eagle, Monite Crystal, Red Cloud, Blue Macalashash, Edith, and Yellow Rose. The population of the valley rose and it fell with the diamonds of the zinc and market. The peak came during the period. Go and wait till that go by. <clears throat> the population of the valley rose and fell with the, the demands of the zinc market. The peak came during the period of 1914, 1917 through 1917. 
when more than 5,000 people were said to have lived and worked here. At the end of the World War I, the bottom fell out of the zinc market and mines were abandoned. These buildings date from the early 1900s were as in habit until the 1960s, serving as home and a general area store and post office. Walking in or near the buildings could be hazardous to you and accelerate their demise. Please help to preserve these his historic structures by viewing them from a distance. Whoo, look at that. Post office and a general, general store was this building. Pretty cool, huh? It's a pretty neat deal. Pretty cool. They built this furnace. I'll go back and read it when I want to get there. Big furnace. And let's go on this side of it. Pretty cool. All right, Silver Line Dreams at the site that would later be called the Morning Star Mine. Prospectors John Wolfer, Bob Setters, and J.H. McCabe thought they had found silver, yeah, silver bearing ore, when in fact, in fact, they had discovered zinc. They built this smelter in 1886 to extract the precious metal. The prospectors dream of riches were dashed with a smelter's first firing legend has it broke discouraged and out of grub they offered to sell their claim to another prospector for a can of oysters the man turned the offer down the claim was later sold to the developers of the morning star mine the smelters was only used again in 1898 to burn lime to make mortar they built a rock furnace charge it with charcoal but in their their ore and started the blast from the opening to the bottom no silver came but out pre prettiest rainbows imaginable floated over the stacks of their blast This barn don't exist no more. You can see the original picture with a the horse there. The library barn showed below stood on the site in front of you. So that would be all this rock formation by this tree here. Working horses and mules required shoeing, harnessing, and grooming. Thus, the barn of the one of the first buildings built by the Morning Star Mining Company. The animals were essential for hauling people, zinc, core, and supplies. Buffalo River was too shallow to barge the ore, and quality roads were fell or, or few. To get the ore to buyers. Team esters hold the heavy loads by stocks, teams of wagons, 25 miles over rough roads to Buffalo City. The ore was then barged on the White River to the nearest rail, rail, railhead. In the early 1900s, the railroad reached Yellowville and Buffalo City, easing the freight lining task. You halted in the wagon they could make a road trip in the day in a day by leaving early in the morning and getting home in the dark 
and a lot of them would bring back supplies for the merchants here in Rush. Fred Dur Durist, Rush resident, J. K. Lyons became the general manager of the Morning Star Mining Company in 1925. His wife left, enjoyed riding her horse, Red Bird, perched her and in the photo below. Pretty cool. I could go on, read and read, but I'm not going to read all this. Company store. I'm right here. You're right here. If I can get this closer. Company store where I show you. Morning Star Hotel. Smelter. Engineer House. Mill. All this is not, a lot of this stuff is not existing. Pretty cool. Old photos of the folks living here. The Hotel Star it was built in 1900 and it was burnt and oh it was burnt in 1947 yeah pretty cool just think over 5,000 people used to live down here before world war one I, I think it was before world war one it says after world war one it the that's when the uh, the mines sh start shutting down. The town hub. Huh. Across Rush Creek in front of you is the remains of the houses and shops once owned by the Morning Star. Many families lived there over the years. Some until in 1960s. And the building nearest you was a Tyler Miller store started by Bill Taylor and last operated in Lee Melody. Melody lived in the house just to the right of the store. What we are looking at right now, a, a blacksmith did his work right here. Here, him working on a horse shoes while the customer is waiting for him to get the horse that taken care of. Here's some of the tools, old pictures of it. But this is where you would come to go to the blacksmith. Pretty cool, huh? All grown up, so it's kind of hard to get up in there, see all that. Hey, wait, wait, wait gate is open maybe this one you're allowed to go in so far let's see what we could do here all right we're coming in is that cool there we go look at this old building beautiful Must be where he have his coal, where he worked on his metal and whatever he when he built for you. A little nice little outfit. There's more to it, but I'm not going to go that direction. Actually, let's go for it. We're here. Let's take a look. I'm not going to go inside because uh, the flooring rotted. But we could look just on the edge here. Isn't that cool? There's an attic up above. That's pretty neat. Okay, here's an attic. Go all the way up through here to the barn loft. Pretty neat. Let's take a look on this side of the, the barn. Pretty cool. Concrete blocks forever. Must be the foundation of the house, my guess, at one time. There's another company store office. Sadly, it's already been torn down. This building was supposed to be here 
The Chase of Mul Mulholland store and the Morning Star mine office stood on the foundation at the front of you. George Chase was the company's first manager and C.A. Mul Mulholland was the store manager. Chase built the store as a uh, commissary. All per, per uh, I'm running out of breath. All purchases the company miners made in the story were de deducted from their paychecks. The convenience of such credit undoubtedly left some miners beho beholden to the company. Chase worked in the company office, company meetings, payroll pre preparation, ores, essays, and the weighing of the ore wagons were all conducted here with 83 men on the payroll in 1915. The mine office was stational to keep the company afloat. The store and the office remained in us through the late 1920s. So 1920s was last was standing. Pretty cool. About a tenth of the mile up the Rush Mountain trail are the openings now gated and locked to the workers of the Morning Star Mine. During the early 1890s, zinc mining was a simple, rich ore, Smith zone, and I, containing up to 52% of zinc was easy to find with pick and shovel. Miners dug the lemon yellow material or mineral they called turkey fat. By the 1890s, the richer ores become scarce, and miners had to dig deeper into the hillside. Their miners found ambers, collard, rose, and jack, cypress, zinc mineral, in the Stratford's bed pockets and fissures. By the 1916, extracting the ore required more soft site tools and methods like compressed air drills and jackhammers blasting with dynamite and milling with state-of-art conservation tables. With the need of mine deeper came increased dangers for the miners and some miners died digging the ore. My, my daddy was almost killed in the mines. It caved in and they are, uh, heard gravel and felt the hitting their hats. They started running. Well, it did kill one man. It caught him. He almost got out, but he didn't. But the rest of them got out. This is a man that survived. Today, the unstable mines are gated to keep people out and allow bats in. And the old mines have become important nurseries and habitation places for bats. Bats are very vulnerable to this disturbance disturbance we protect the bats and you're by staying out of the mines Indian bat India bats roost in the abandoned mines India bats all right let's go on it's kind of hard to see everything but here it is there we go see the what the buildings look like By 1918, the mill had become of age using the huge jaw crushers and advanced construction tables to separate the zinc and mill could process 200 tons of ore a day. But with the wars ended and the over production of zinc, the metal value plunge. And my battery ran out, so I had to go down there. Pretty steep down there to get to it, the car. Let's see where I left off. By 1918, the mill had come of age using a huge jaw crusher and advanced construction table to separate the zinc. And mill could process 200 tons of ore a day. But with the wars ended and the overproduction of zinc, the metal value plunged. Woodmen, firemen, jigmen, zig, jig tenders, and engineers composed a typical rush milling crew. Crew worked 10 hours a day, five to six days a week for a pay ranging from 20 to 35 cents per hour. There you go, guys. 
The Morningstar op mill opened up 1898 to steam boil fuel of wood cut from the surrounding hillside powered a 50 ton a day ore crusher. Right here, they got it fenced off. You cannot go there. There's one of the mines right through here. You can see all that is dangerous. You can't go up in there. And plus they're preserving the bats. Here's something kind of cool. Uh, this part you're allowed to walk in here. I'll have to go the next time to read this. There's a foundation of... Uh, I think this is the part of the... Yeah, look how heavy the bolts, threads here on this concrete. This would have been that mill part of it where they work crushing the the ores here's part of the building and bricks they built pretty cool and this about as far as we could allow to go up in here you can see the foundation they built here would have been platforms everything up above here uh, a lot of awesome construction and then the mines itself right here is a big drop off you can't go down there but at least we can see some of the foundation of it Whew. and back in the back will be all the mines where you're not allowed to go to it's prohibit not to be back there that's pretty neat I thought I'd just show you this ghost town while we're waiting on doing our kayaking uh, waiting for the person to come back that was going to take us on their the kayak uh, the lady told us about this ghost town it's well worth the trip that'll get, put us about right time to get back there and get ready to go on kayaking down the Buffalo River Woo! oh yeah oh yeah here's the Here's the actual picture of the mine. That's all the foundation. The trail back in the parking lot across old mining lace rocks now covered with plants and trees and the old Morningstar Mill smokestacks like the one in the, this 1915 photograph lies on the ground nearby with a close to the mine and mill of 1931. You see part of that and the smokestack is on this side here. This way you can see the smokestack kind of hard with it i don't know how good to get it big old smokestack right there go all the way down kind of bent it's way down there that's the whole smokestack right there that would have been right here and this picture right here that would have been part of that smokestack with the close of mine in in mill in 1931 the company village slowly vanished and by the 1960s, people referred to Rush as a ghost town. The story of Rush now lives on the recollections of those who lived and worked here. The scattered ruins throughout the valley remain, reminds us the existing times when Rush and the Morning Star were part of a national expectation in zinc mining. Today, Rush is a historic, historic direct protected by the National Park Service. Recreation replaced mining in the ever-changing story of Rush and plants are overtaking the once bust bustling community sites. The people of Rush are now curious visitors and dedicated caretakers. The biggest change is how plant life has grown up. It doesn't look like it used to. It used to be you could see everywhere. Bessie Casting Rush resident. So she lived out here resident. So at one, at one time you could saw all this before it all wildlife take over the plantation, plants and trees. What a sight to see. I took you on explore of a ghost town. I hope you enjoy it. Oh, here we go. I hope you, this is Wild Bill's Adventures Outdoor. I hope you enjoy it. 
enjoy it. I say enjoy it. Oh yeah. Enjoy my adventures. This is Wild Bill's Adventures Outdoor. And go ahead, hit like, subscribe, and thumbs up. Woo! Oh yeah! Enjoy the adventures and the next to be. And keep up with all of my adventures. Talk to you later.